right, good to have everybody here this morning. Thank you for coming to Bible Baptist Church. Uh, let's grab a songbook. Brother Steve, our mute, there it goes. Thank you. Uh, let's grab a songbook. Let's all stand. And Caleb's going to lead us in our first song. All right, take that hood book, turn to number seven. Blessed be the day, amen. Let's all stand and sing it out the first verse. Here we go, ready? All praise to him, our reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for men to die, that he might marry thee. Let's sing it out. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. On that second, his name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. On that last, his name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace, of all earth's kingdoms conqueror, so never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. All right. Thank you, Caleb. Again, thank you so much for coming to Bible Baptist Church this morning. We're going to have a good time in church. We're going to uh, sit and enjoy the music, and then we're going to enjoy uh, God speaking to us. So let the Holy Spirit talk to us today. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Brother Carroll, would you lead us in prayer? Our heavenly Father. Lord, it's so good to be in church again today. Lord, be encouraged one with another. Presence, Lord, we're so grateful that, Lord, you've given us a day that, Lord, we're able to meet together. We we'll ask, Lord, now that you just bless this hour. Thank you for those that have been or are here. And pray for those that are not able to be here. That, Lord, you uh, just work and bring healing to their bodies. Lord, they could be able to be back with us to worship in spirit and truth. Lord, I pray that everything is done today to honor and glorify you. Give Brother Kevin the power, Lord, as he brings a message this morning. May it stir our hearts to a greater service for thee. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. Again, thank you so much for coming. If you got a bulletin, uh, you will notice that our bulletin covers are a little different right now. Um, we are in the process of raising money for, it's called Bearing Precious Seed, but this is National Bible Month. And what we do is as a church, we come together and we try to raise money to send two Bearing Precious Seeds for the uh, uh, printing of Bibles. Uh, I think in the past we mainly just did it for the paper, but now they need it for paper and supplies. It doesn't go for any salaries, nothing like that. But if you look on the back of your bulletin, it tells a little bit about uh, the uh, Philippines and kind of what they're trying to do and so much going on over there. And then if you look down, it says our goal for 2023 is $200,000. One roll of paper costs an average of eight or uh, yeah, an average of $800. Run roll of paper can produce 400 Bibles or 1,800 New Testaments. Um, last year, we were able to buy two rolls of paper. 
So we'll see how the Lord leads and how everything goes. But uh, we'd like f- to be able to give. This is just uh, something extra that if you can give, we understand. If you can't, we understand that too. But um, it's a great way for us to get Bibles all over the world. I believe it was two years ago we gave money uh, for this, and they printed Bibles and sent it to our missionaries, uh, the Marcos. And uh, they were able to hand it out, and they said it was amazing. Pastor Miller was telling me a little bit about it. It was amazing. Some of them got those Bibles, and you would have thought you gave them a ton of money. They just couldn't believe that they had a copy of the Bible in their hand. So, uh, again, this is something we do, and we do it every February. We'll do it this Sunday and then the next two Sundays, and then uh, 1st of March we'll figure out kind of where we're at and go from there. But uh, if you can, uh, please be mindful of that. Prayer request, uh, pray for the pulpit committee as we prepare and and look for uh, men and also pray for our next pastor. Wherever he's at or whatever he's doing, let's pray that God will bless him and prepare him as he comes here also. Please continue to pray for my mom. She is a little bit better, so continue to pray for her. Ryan Marlowe, pray for him. Trisha Fish and Pat Gerke. And uh, there's others that are either not feeling well, uh, maybe not here this morning, uh, but let's make sure we pray for each other. Pray for everybody in the congregation. Just uh, pray that God will, A, this time of year, keep you healthy. That's a, that's a big one anymore with the weather changing and with everything going on. Uh, let's pray for each other, but also pray that God will bless our church and bless each one of you as uh, we go through the, the weeks uh, into spring. I'm ready for spring. I'm ready for uh, it, it's been good weather. I can't gripe, but uh, I'm ready for spring. I'm ready for some green grass. So, but uh, all right, Caleb, why don't you come and lead us in another song? All right, take that hymnal and turn to number 569, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. On that second. How I so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence will lead well. Redeem, redeem, redeem my love. I know I shall love his beauty, the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Is shouted forever I am. Amen. All right, announcements. Uh, this evening at 5.30 we will have a prayer meeting time for any of the men that want to come or any of the ladies that want to come. Feel, uh, please feel free to come for that. It's a good time to get together and pray for different ones in the church and the ministry here. And then also... The business meeting that is on here for the 19th is actually tonight, okay? It's been in the bulletin uh, the last week, so I want to make sure that you're aware that there is a business meeting. It should not be very long, but there is a business meeting tonight. Uh, it'll be right after the evening service, so please, uh, if you can, be here for that, of course. Wednesday night, uh, midweek service and patch club. Uh, Saturday, next Saturday is soul winning at 10 o'clock, and then uh, February... The 26th, we will have our men and ladies meeting. 
We're going to try it on a Sunday. We're going to have it at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We're just going to have uh, a time where you come and uh, we'll bring food. We'll sit around. We'll eat for a little while, and then we'll have a, uh, a service, and then we will uh, talk about some of the other things that are going on. We had a good meeting uh, last month talking about things that need to be done, realizing that there's a lot to be done. So, but uh, we want everybody to come. We want you to be a part. This is your church. This is uh, uh, about all of us. It's not about one person making a decision. It's all of us being there and being a part of it. So we want you to come, be a part of it. Uh, we'll announce a little bit more next week, but uh, as far as food, but uh, it will be uh, just bring different items like you usually do. The church will supply the meat and then... Uh, if you will just bring vegetables, uh, desserts, desserts, <laughs> desserts. Yeah, yeah, you, you kind of catch it there. So, but no, uh, like I said, the church will supply the meat. We'll kind of go from there. But uh, I think that's all the announcements. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to stop one of us, and we will try to answer any questions we have. Um, we're trying to work on a calendar for through uh, April or March, April, May, try to get some things worked out here so everybody can stay kind of ahead of the curve, know what's going on at the church. So keep, uh, keep everybody in uh, knowing what's going on. That would be the best way to put it. So, All right, grab that hymnal, and after this song, we will take up the offering. All right, take that hymnal and turn to number 277, Trust and Obey. We never can prove the delights of his love until on the moon altar we lay. For more labor he shows, joy he bestows, who trust and obey, trust and obey. Sit at his feet, or beside on the way. He says, We'll do where he says we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other. Trust and obey. Amen. All right. Let's make sure we stay faithful in our giving. And always remember you can't outgive God. No matter what you give, He will definitely bless it. He will make it uh, exactly what He wants out of it. But He needs us to, He wants us to give. It's a way He can give back to us. So uh, be uh, aware of that. Also, we have. A lot of things going on in the church that still um, still have to have money for. We got utilities and things like that. So we want to keep our giving uh, solid and please help us with that and be, please be faithful. And also with the mission giving, um, those missionaries, they need that monthly support. So we need to make sure we stay faithful with that. All right. Uh, Brother John Miller, would you please lead us?
back to you, such a blessing on this offer, offering and uh, for it to be used according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good.
you have your Bibles, turn over to the book of Jonah. We are going to be in the book of Jonah this morning. I want to preface uh, the sermon this morning a little bit as we um, as we talk about Jonah. We're talking about prayers in the Bible and uh, not how to pray, but just different prayers in the Bible. And uh, like I said, this morning we're going to talk about Jonah. God came to Jonah and told Jonah, hey, I want you to go down to Nineveh. I want you to go down there. I'm going to preach. I'm going to destroy the city of Nineveh. But I want you, I'm going to give them a chance. So I want you to go down there. And Jonah says, but God, I don't want to go. So instead of going where he was supposed to, Jonah takes it upon himself and he runs down and gets on a ship to go to Tarshish. So if you look at it on the map, they're totally opposite of each other. So he gets in this ship. He's going to Tarshish. He's not going to listen to God. He's not going to do what God says. He's going to do his own thing. He gets in this ship. He gets out into the middle of this huge body of water, and all of a sudden a storm comes up. And most of us have all heard the story of Jonah and the well and, and all of that. We're going to kind of walk through Jonah's life today because Jonah's life is kind of a picture of most of us Christians' lives. Things happen. Sometimes because of our choice, some things not because of our choice, but things happen. So if you would, please stand with me. For the re if you can't, totally understand. I'm going to read several verses. Actually, I'm going to read quite a few verses today, not right now, but uh, as we go through this sermon more than I normally do. But I want to get a perspective of it. So look in Jonah chapter 1, in verse 12 it says, And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be come unto you. For I know that my, for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. For the sea wrought and was temp temptuous against them. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us now not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceeding, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for loving us. I thank you that uh, we can come to you in prayer. Dear Lord, you'll hear us. I pray that the Holy Spirit will meet with us today. I pray, dear Lord, that you will uh, just speak to each one, dear Lord, and help each one of us get something from the sermon this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we see here, Jonah had gotten himself into a real predicament. He thought God asked him to do something. He thought he could handle it, so he went and did his own thing. Now look at where he's at. He has disobeyed God, and now he was in the middle of the sea, in the belly of a fish, to die a slow death. I don't know about you, I can't imagine, when I was talking to the uh, teenagers this morning, I can't imagine being in the belly of a fish, okay? You know what? It has other dead fish in it, okay? It has the acid that breaks things down. I mean, it just, it would be a really gross place to even spend a minute, much less three days. What do you think Jonah did? What do, what do we think Jonah did? Well, he did what every good Christian did or would do. Hey, God, remember me? <laughs> hey, I got to get things right real quick here. Wow, what's going to happen? God, help me. If you, Lord, if you help me, I'll go to Nineveh, if you'll help me. So the first thing this morning I want you to see is, do not wait for bad times to start praying. A lot of times we wait till the problems come before we start praying. God says, I don't want that. Many times in our life we wait until we cannot fix the problem, or we cannot see the end to the problem, then we go to God. And God says, 
That's not what I want. I want you to come to God. I want you to talk to me. Jonah had disobeyed God and was running from God. And this made it really hard to pray. When things are not right in our lives, it's hard to pray. When we have sin in our life, it's hard to pray. Why? Because there's something between God and I. It makes it hard. As a child, when I would disobey my parents, which was hardly ever, my sister was the bad one. I always disobeyed. Uh, uh, but you know what? When I disobeyed, you know what? There was a little friction there. You know what? At the supper table, there was a little less talking going on. They're on the ride to go somewhere. We didn't know it. Why? Because I had disobeyed. I had done something that put friction between us. This is what happened with, with uh, Jonah. This is how Christians can be sometimes. We are embarrassed about what we've done, and instead of getting it right with God, we continue down the wrong road. We continue. Jonah knew what he'd done, what he was going to do was wrong, but he still went and did it. This morning, if you are headed down the wrong path in life and have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today would be a great day to do that. Today would be a great day to uh, accept Jesus as your personal Savior. In salvation, the only way to heaven is by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Salvation, you are admitting you are unable to save yourself. You are trusting Jesus as your personal Savior. You're admitting that I have done wrong and I need to trust Jesus Christ to take me to heaven. That's what salvation is. So if, you're, if you are not saved, this morning would be a great day to get that relationship with God. Now, if you are saved, hmm, let's see, where do we fit here? How does it work? Jonah was at a time in his life that only God could save him. You know, I, I, think, I thought as I read through this, think what you would think, and we'll all be different, if you were in the belly of the fish, what would go through your mind? Man, what happened yesterday? What happened a week ago? What happened a month ago? You know what? You're down there in that dark, nasty place. You're going to think about things years ago. What, do, what goes through our mind? What will we think about? I wonder how long it took Jonah to realize the key to getting out of this fish's belly was repenting was saying, hey, God, I messed up. In our lives, why do we wait until things are getting bad or even no end in sight before we start looking to God for the answer? Remember, Jonah was in the belly of the fish because of his choice. A lot of times, our situations are because of our choice. Whether you make good choices or bad choices, we can be in a situation that causes us to be in a bad way. Sometimes it's not by us doing the wrong thing, but it's by just a choice. Look on over in Jonah, chapter 2. We're going to read several verses here again. Jonah 2, chapter 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction, unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried, I and thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about all the billows, and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward the holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul, the depths closed me around about, the weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, and the earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Jonah had to get to a point that he realized only God could save him. He got to a point and said, you know what? I have, not got, I have no way out. Only God can save me. So point number two here. Get things right with God. You know, a lot of times we let things just kind of, what they say, fester. Things will just, 
Uh, we let it get a little worse. You, you got a sore or you got a bruise or a cut and you pick at it and you pick at it and you pick at it. Two or three weeks down the road, you still got that sore. Well, if you put medicine on it and put a Band-Aid on it, probably in about six to eight days, it probably would have went away. But a lot of times we don't do that. And sometimes that's how we are with in our life. We allow things to uh, uh, just keep building in our life. And that's why sometimes it's hard to get right with God because by the time we do it, there's so many things in our life. As we read, Jonah was in a place in his life. There was literally no way out unless God intervened. When Jonah began to pray, he started by getting things right with God. Look there in verse 2 that we read. And said, I cried by reason of my infliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. You know what? He said, okay, I got to go to the one that can take care of this. It's time. I've got to do this. He cried out to God. <clears throat> this is where Jonah got things right with God. In life, we should keep short accounts with God. Don't let things get big. Keep short accounts. Do not let things get so out of control in your life before you stop, start praying. We should pray on a regular basis. We should pray every day. Get used to that relationship with God. If you look over in uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. God gives us things to do here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 16 says, Rejoice evermore. And then number 17 right there, Pray without ceasing. 18, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Pray without ceasing. Do we ever catch ourselves just talking to God? There's times when... Something will be, I'll be trying to work something out in my mind and I'll find myself just, hey, God, here I am. Here's the situation. God, I got to know what you want me to do. Just talk to him like he's right there. Talk to him like he's your friend. If you pray a lot, you'll get to that point in your life. Um, but we should catch ourselves. Do you have a friend that you hang around or that you're around that you could say something and they could finish your sentence? You, you start something and they could finish it for you? That's, that's when you know you're good friends. You, could, uh, you can communicate very well that way. This is how God wants to be with us. When a situation comes up, are you able to quote a verse that God has given you out of the Bible? Are you able to uh, remember something that was preached? Was there something there that you can recall that say, hey, I remember God did this. That's the way God wants us to be. Look back over in Jonah. Jonah. We're still in chapter 2, but down to verse 7. When my soul fainteth within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, unto thine holy temple, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that, that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah out on dry land. Jonah in the belly of the fish had remembered God. I think I would have remembered him real quick when I got in the belly of that fish. But you know what? It took Jonah a little bit. Say, hey, man, this is a rough time. He remembered the power of God. He remembered what God can do. He remembered uh, the abilities of God. What, what God has said and what he'll follow through. Can you remember a time in your life where you were close to God? This morning, get things right with God so that your prayer life can be right so that you can have that relationship. Things are a lot better in any relationship when both of you are right. And that's what God wants. So, number three here, things happen when we pray and trust God. Things will happen when we pray and trust God. 
The fish vomited Jonah out on dry ground. Jonah didn't even have to swim to shore. God says, you know what? I think I got his attention. I think he's going to do what I want him to do now. So the fish came up and spit him out on dry ground. So Jonah said, all right, it's time to go. God can work all things out when it's God's will. When it's God's will, he will work everything out the way it's supposed to be done. Our next pastor, God will work it out in his will. We can't get in a hurry. We can't uh, stress over it. God has a plan. And you know what? We pray. We talk to God. God, what do you want? God, how do you want us to find a pastor? Lord, bless that man that's going to come someday. But this is what happens when we pray. If you look over in Jonah chapter 3, Jonah chapter 3, first few verses here. And the word of the Lord came into Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an ex exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Here, Jonah got serious about doing God's will. Say, so what do you mean? He got serious. God told him to go. It's a three-day journey, and he did it in one day. That's getting pretty serious. You know what? I think God had Jonah's attention. Hey, you know what? You spend time in the belly of a fish, he'd have my attention real quick. So as we think of Jonah's life, how does this fit with where we're at in life? Our prayer life will mirror God's will in our life. How you pray will mirror your relationship with God. Jonah got a second chance to do what was right. Many times God gives us a second chance to do what is right. Are we taking advantage of that second chance? Sometimes God gives us three, four, five chances. But you know what? If we go to God and get it right, God will give us the ability to do more for Him. Notice Jonah went in one day what should have taken him three. God will get you much further in life faster than most when you're willing to follow His will. Have you ever done something in your own power and had to go back and redo it? Mm -hmm. Or better yet, us men, they give you directions to something. And what do we do? We try to do it on our own and we find out we have parts left over. So now we got to take it apart to put, find out where these parts go. We read the instructions and it all works out. Wow, what a great idea. So it's the same way with God's will. In verse 5 here, chapter 3, verse 5, it says, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. The people in Nineveh believed God because of Jonah's preaching. Hmm. Wonder why. Can you imagine how alive and blessed you would feel if you had just been saved from dying in the stomach of a fish? I'm sure Jonah's preaching was a little more powerful than just the average guy up there preaching. When you just had your life spared, you know what? You'd say, you know what? I, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. The whole city of Nineveh was saved because they repented and prayed. Our lives can be more for Jesus Christ when we repent and pray. Look on down in uh, Jonah chapter 4. Jonah chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceeding that he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and re repentest there of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah sees the miracle. Okay, Jonah sees what God has done. He has, gonna, he has saved Nineveh. Number four, point number four this morning. 
Many times we get angry with God when our prayers are answered differently than what we wanted. We ask God for something and God doesn't do it the way we want it. And we get upset with God. God, why did you not do this? God, I ask you for this. God, I wanted it this way. And God says, wasn't my will. Wasn't the way I wanted it. Jonah got angry with God because God spared the city of Nineveh. Our prayer should be, first of all, for God's will. What is God's will? God's will is not always our will. God's plans are not always our plans. We do not know the future. God does. We do not always know the circumstance, but God does. This morning, realize God knows the future. God knows what is best for you. Learn to pray and ask God for His will. Then the hard part is trust. That's the hard part. Because we want to pray for it, and then we want to try to do it in our own power. God says that's not how it works. Jonah chapter 4, verse 5. Jonah 4, 5. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth and sat under it, in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. Number five, Jonah went out of the city, the great city of Nineveh that God had saved. He sits down and he says, I'm angry. How dare God save that city? I told God this was going to happen if I went over there and preached. God is going to save that city. And look what he did. He saved that city. That's not what I wanted, God. I told you this would happen. Uh huh. So Jonah was out there pouting. There are Christians all over our country that are not in church this morning because they feel God has let them down. They believe God did not take care of them. God did not answer their prayer or something happened in their life that they didn't think was right. They prayed and God did nothing for them. Jonah was given two great miracles. First of all, God saved his life. Second of all, he saw God save a city. God does many miracles in our lives. He shows his power. And many times he does things for us. And we forget the miracles because of the situation we're in or the circumstance we're in. We forget about what God has done for us in the past. Jonah went outside the city and pouted like a child would have. Then they do not went like a child would have if a child did not get their way. That's what a child would do. They'll go pout. I didn't get my way. My mom didn't do this. They pout. Get upset. Mm -hmm. That's what Jonah did. He's a grown man and he's doing it. How do we react when our prayers are not answered the way we think they should be answered? Sometimes we're like that as Christians. We're adults. Sometimes, God, why? I've asked God why. God, I don't understand it. Why didn't you do this? this is, for, God, for you, God, this is a simple little fix. Why didn't you? Obviously, it wasn't God's will. The last part of Jonah shows how selfish Jonah really was. Jonah, and we're not going to read it here, but if you look down, he was out there. God allowed a gourd to come up. And keep the sun off of him. He's still mad at God. So God had, per se, a bug come and eat the gourd. The gourd died. Now he's out there in the sun. And he said, see, I can't. It's just not right. It's just not right. God, you don't really care. But he was more worried about that gourd than he was the city of Nineveh. What is our prayer life like today? As we look at the life of Jonah this morning. Where are you in your prayer life? A, not following God. You're in the point of your prayer life that God's will is over there and you're headed this way. I'm not following God. Or letter B, you're where Jonah was in the belly of the fish and you're begging God to help you get out of the trouble you're in. God, I need your help to get out of the situation I'm in. Or letter C, 
You're totally following God. You're doing exactly what God wants. You're, you're headed in the right direction. You're praying every day. You're faithful to God. You're doing what you're supposed to do. Letter D, you're seeing miracles happen. There's things that you can see in your life where God's opened this door and God's opened this door and God's allowed this to happen. Or letter E, you've seen what God can do. You, you've trusted God. You know what he can do. And you're sitting there upset because he didn't do it the way you wanted it done. We're all somewhere in our life. Where's our prayer life? Are you totally sold out in your prayer life to God's will? Have you learned to pray? Have you learned to talk to God? Is God somebody that when something happens, the first thing you do is you pray? Lord, what about this? Lord, what, is you, what do you think about this? Lord, what about... The best way to work out a problem is to talk about it. Here, probably two or three months ago, my wife and I, were, we were discussing something. And I just couldn't get my mind wrapped around what we were discussing. So we started talking about it. By three quarters of the way through the conversation, the answer to the problem was right there. It was like, I looked there and said, right there's our answer. It was that simple. But what did we have to do? We had to talk about it. We had to communicate. Sometimes God's will is right there, but we don't take the time to talk to him and find out, oh, it's right here. This is what he wants me to do. We need to learn to communicate. In prayer, talking to God, God may work out the situation for you, but God may do it in his timing and his will. Sometimes we want it right now. And God says, you're not quite ready for it. Okay? It's kind of like a, uh, a teenager. They, get, they turn 16. One of the first vehicles they want is what? A Ford Mustang or a Chevy Camaro or something like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, that's not what's best for you. Say, well, what's best for you? Some little Toyota Corolla that's about 15 years old and won't go over 45 miles an hour. Now, that's what's best for you. But, Dad, you don't understand. Nope, I do understand. Why? Because I'm looking down the road at what's best for you. Same way with God. God says, I'm looking down the road to see what's best for you. Right now, you may think, and I may think, this is what, oh, I go, oh, really, this is what? And God says, nope, it's not quite there. It's not quite the way I want it done yet. It's not my will yet. So where are we at in our prayer life? Where do we fit? You know, the book of Jonah is actually the life of most Christians. We have times where everything's good. We have valleys where things are bad and hard. Then, then the Lord blesses us and does things. And then we go through. It's just, it's. It's the way of life. But this morning, let me ask you, how's your prayer life? Whether you're on the mountaintop or you're in the valley, where's your prayer life? How's your prayer life with God? Is a relationship not right because of me? Is a relationship not right because I've made poor choices? Where does it fit? The only person that can answer this is you. Your spouse can't answer it for you. Your children can't answer it for you. This is between you and God. Jonah's life totally changed when he got right with God and allowed God to use him. This morning, do you want God to use you? Do you want God's will in your life? Do you want God to bless you? Then maybe... It's time to say, okay, God, what do you want? And how do you want this to happen? And that's what happens when we pray. We spend time communicating and talking to God. This morning, how's your prayer life? If you would, please bow your head. Close your eyes. You know, as, as we go through life, many things happen. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But oh, 
always remember, God is in full control. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the life of Jonah, dear Lord, so we can learn from it, learn what to do and sometimes what not to do. Dear Lord, I pray that each person in here will take a few moments in their life and just think about, Lord, where they're at, what you want to do with their life, and how important their prayer life is, how important their life is to you, and how you want to do miracles in their life. Dear Lord, we have to give it all to you. It's an all or nothing thing, dear Lord. I pray that we'll learn to do that. Please help us. In your name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand. Mrs. Beeman's going to play a few verses here. But if God spoke to your heart, feel free to come down. You can, you can do it right there. Just bow down where you're at. Sit down and say, God, I need you. I need your help. Thank you all so much for coming this morning. I uh, really do appreciate it. If you can, come back tonight. 6 o'clock will be church. 5.30 is prayer meeting. And then we'll have a hopefully a short business meeting afterwards. There's a couple things I know that um, need to be brought up tonight. So please, if you can, be back for that. And we'd appreciate it. And uh, please be careful as you travel home. Uh, Brother Nolan, would you close us in a word of prayer, please? <clears throat> 